Clay. Thanks for that introduction. Uh, and uh, so this is second sustainability conference. Have we sustained the conference now? You know, through time? Uh, I've titled this Sustainability in the Eyes of a Decision uh, Analyst because I wanted to uh, share with the audience uh, a technical framework uh, for uh, how I think about decision making about natural resource use over long periods of time. And so I'll describe that framework briefly and also I'll introduce uh, three case studies in which my colleagues and I apply this type of thinking. So uh, most definitions of sustainability have something to do with uh, the use of resources to today without compromising uh, their availability in the future. Uh, and when we talk about uh, sustainable, sustainable development, st sustainability projects, we're, we're, we're acknowledging that component of time implicitly, but uh, we, we don't often see it you know, recognized explicitly. So to me, the concept of sustainability implies that there's a, a, a formal uh, a, a analysis, a formal recognition of time in, in how we look at uh, how societies make uh, uh, resource decisions. Um, so. Um, uh, so my, uh, part, part of my uh, area of, of, of expertise is in uh, applied decision theory uh, as it applies to uh, management of fish and wildlife populations. So, uh, so this framework I'm going to talk about is, uh, is called dynamic programming and, and there's some related tools. I'll call this uh, DP maybe a little bit through the, uh, through the talk. It was uh, developed uh, by this mathematician, Richard Bellman, and it has its origins in the uh, field of operations research. And it's been extensively applied in areas of uh, economics and engineering, uh, even theoretical ecology, but it hasn't seen much use in uh, applied conservation. And that's too bad, in my view, because, um, because it, it's a tool that's well suited to uh, evaluating how we make our decisions today uh, in the context that we have to make many more decisions uh, into, the, uh, in, into the indefinite future. So dynamic programming uh, is a way that efficiently finds a, a stream of actions through time that are intended to uh, provide some, something of societal value to us, whether that, that value uh, is something that evolves through time or something that's, uh, that uh, is given to us at the end of a time frame. Uh, it not only takes into account where each decision that we face today might take us to a new future state next time period, but it also takes into account all the possible future decisions that we'd be making uh, for the same problem. Uh, dynamic programming gives us uh, a decision policy that we call state dependent, meaning that uh, we, we uh, simply uh, make our decision or, or, or we measure our current uh, condition of the state and, then we, and that is a triggering opportunity for us to, uh, to select a, a best management action for that, for that state. Um, dynamic programming can take into account uh, both uh, stochastic uncertainties, uh, for example, uh, the, the amount of rain, total rainfall we expect next year, which could affect the riskiness of the, of the action that we're uh, uh, choosing today. It can also take into account epistemic or these uh, structural uncertainties, for example, uncertainty about um, uh, a population threshold that when we pass that it changes how the system behaves. So uh, whether we're talking about, whether we're concerned with uh, um, uh, reducing the, the abundance of an invasive species or re restoring uh, uh, an imperiled species or we're uh, considering uh, harvest actions uh, for a game uh, species, it, uh, tools like dynamic programming can give us a, a, a nice way of of evaluating the context of our decision today against uh, future uh, threats and opportunities. So uh, the first example is uh, it concerns the management of, of uh, native prairies uh, on wildlife refuges in the northern Great Plains. Uh, and a lot of those areas are under uh, invasion by non-native introduced grasses. So the objective here in this problem is to increase and, and ultimately sustain um, uh, a, a high level of cover by native prairie uh, forbs and grasses and do that cheaply. So uh, DP has been able to, to, we've been able to use DP to give managers uh, recommendations about which actions to take depending on which grass is invading and how much of it is doing the invasion. A second uh, project deals with the, the, uh, the public harvest management of alligators in the southeast. And um, you know, because of the alligator's unique life history characteristics, and because of the 
the public's love-hate relationship toward the animal, it makes uh, harvest management uh, difficult. But managers would like to sustain uh, a, an annual harvest of alligators, but making sure that uh, populations uh, either don't uh, uh, become overabundant or, or they go locally extinct. And so uh, dynamic programming can give managers uh, uh, optimal uh, 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 so, uh, quota uh, uh, recommendations that take into account the current population size. The third example uh, uh, concerns the development of a network of protected lands for the conservation of the uh, of the gopher tortoise in, in Georgia. So, uh, the 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 uh, decision has to, uh, the decision is based on the the, sh the shape and the amount of lands uh, currently. Uh, available as well as the current distribution of gopher tortoises and the decision is hard as you might expect because of uncertainties about population processes, the chance availability of lands and then long-term drivers such as uh, urbanization and climate change. So this just scratches the surface of, of how um, uh, tools like dynamic programming can uh, help uh, in our mission to, to manage natural resources over the long term in any case where uh, t uh, time as an element cannot be ignored in, in our decision. So thanks for your time. <laughs>